Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. We're gonna do another comic book haul video and it's sort of uh, only been a week since we did the previous one. And uh, I wanna give you a little intro to this comic book haul, okay? Because I wasn't expecting uh, to have another comic book haul coming this early to me. But uh, basically what happened was uh, I was editing the cryptocurrency video uh, that we did a couple of weeks ago or so so it was hardcore editing that and was spending a lot of time on on the software uh, you know on the computer and they needed a little break so basically when I take a break I sort of check my messages first and then stretch and go for a walk or whatever it is right so when I uh, you know stopped the editing process and went to my messages to check my email uh, this is the first message I got right so this this message is basically the reason that we have this comic book haul coming to us okay so this is the email message that i opened up okay let me throw on my glasses and the email message was this hey chicho i've been following your youtube channel for years now and i want to thank you for what you do your perspective on life is grounding and i'm grateful for it i'm excited to make a donation to you but only if you promise to use it in a comic book haul, right? So just imagine me hardcore editing, opening this email going, yes, right? Awesome. It'll be a drop in the bucket towards the enjoyment, education, and relaxation I've been able to experience from your content. What's your preferred donation method, right? And then I sent them a reply and I was like, seriously, my eyes were going goo ga ga, -ga and my, my body was like going, okay, you need a break, right? So as soon as I read this, I was like, my excitement level just kicked off. So I sent them a reply, that email reply that was like <laughs> over the top excited, right? What a fantastic message. Um, uh, I'm editing videos, so I explained to them, and you know, hell yeah, da 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 da. Um, and then I told them, you know, just through PayPal, the great, you know, great way to do it. Now, as I mentioned in the previous comic book haul video, um, it was basically buy it now or make an offer for the comic hauls we got in the last video, which was all Valiant comics, right? From the, a lot of them from the uh, pre-Unity era, right? Some of the Rise stuff that I wanted, some Solar and Harbinger and stuff, right? And uh, basically uh, what I had done is made offers for those lots and I had kept a little bit of buffer um, in my comic book budget just in case those, um, the buys that we didn't last haul the guy made a counter offer i would just you know accept a counter offer and get those comics right so i had a little bit of money in my comic book budget and i didn't know how much uh this person was going to be sending me right so as soon as i sent a reply saying thank you very much for sure you know it, it'll be fantastic and guaranteed i'll use it for a comic book haul he sent me uh the the donation the contribution and it was more than what i expected and i've been eyeing i usually eye a few different lots or issues or whatever and when my comic book budget you know reaches a place where i can do a buy i sometimes do a buy or hold off if the comics are already gone and whatnot so i sort of have a rotating you know i do searches on ebay just for and i have automatic searches going so i had a i had a few things i was tracking and by the time the money, you know the donation came in, um, some of the stuff was gone, but there was two lots from this one seller, and this is a new seller, just like the last haul we got. It was someone selling their collection, and this one was I don't know if the person is a used I don't think it's a used book place. I think it's a collector, but it might be a comic book store that's getting rid of the inventory or not they're just coming on ebay right so they didn't have a lot of feedback and those two halls i was eyeing in this right so one of the halls i sent an offer and then i sent the person a message that was selling these comics right so let me read you the message that i sent to the seller right because uh, i want to read you a message that i got from ebay right and this is important if you're buying from ebay you gotta if you're using a platform the best thing to do is use you know abide by the rules of the platform that you're using right so i sent the following message to the seller right i had sent them an offer for um one of the lots is 
a valiant lot and the other one is a vertigo lot, right? So I, I sent a message regard, I sent an offer for the valiant lot, right? And my, call, my message to the person was this, hi, I just sent you an offer for the Exo Man of War lot, that's Valiant Comics. Uh, uh, you have up. I was thinking about sending you an offer for uh, this set as well, right? And the set, the other set that we got was um, uh, DMZ, Vertigo's DMZ, right? It's a lot of DMZ comics, okay? Uh, I was going to send you an offer for $45, but notice that it stated that it was free shipping. Is this correct? Is this free shipping? If not, how much will shipping be for this lot as well as the XO lot if you accept the offer, right? So the guy didn't reply for a little bit of time. And then what I ended up doing was basically doing a buy it now on the XO lot and sent him an offer for $45 Canadian and he had listed it for $60 Canadian, the DMZ lot, right? So let me put up the, the haul. That way you see what we ended up getting. Uh, where is my haul? Uh, XO DMZ haul, okay. Now, by the way, uh, we're live streaming this as well, just like the previous comic book haul. So there's a whole bunch of people watching this uh, uh, on uh, watching this live so I'm going to be popping up some tables and charts that we're going to look at while we you know when we take a look at this haul right get into the get into the data of these comic books okay so basically what I ended up doing is I just did a buy it now on the XO lot and the XO lot he had listed for $130 Canadian initially uh, when I looked at that lot, that uh, the lot that he had for sale, he had it as best offer as well. And someone had already made him a best offer, right? And he had declined that offer. And the person that had uh, made that offer was a reseller. Their, their feedback was into the thousands, right? So I'm assuming the guy was trying to lowball the XO lot, okay? and. My guess would be he had lowballed it to like $80 or $90. So the initial offer I sent him was $110 Canadian for the XO lot. And the XO lot had 71 comic books, okay? And it has XO number one to, ba -ba -ba -ba, uh, XO number one to five or six, which one does it? XO number one to six plus the later issues as well, right? So it's only missing like 10 comics out of it. So I, I just went, you know the money had come in thank you for the donation for the support this haul is because you made that you you made that contribution right so I just went I don't want to lose this one so I you know did it buy it now on the XO and sent him an offer for the forty five dollar right for the DMZ lot now this is the message I got back from the seller hi sorry I just saw the message now I'll tell you what for forty five dollars I'll add this lot to the Exo Man of War purchase. The shipping combined will definitely cost more than $25 because he was charging me $25 for shipping from Ottawa to BC, but I'll eat the difference. Let me know if you're fine with that and I'll send you an invoice for $45 and I'll cancel this DMZ lot. Let me know, thanks. Now, I've been on eBay since 2002. I've been buying, I've sold some stuff and there are people that you know say that you can buy it off this buy it off that and if you're doing that stuff on eBay you should be careful right now I had no reason not to trust this person I was you know I did trust them uh, but I didn't want to bypass eBay right because I know everything's being automated and all these platforms that we're using and they're looking for catchphrases and different combinations of emails um, messages being sent back and forward so they're monitoring that stuff right and as soon as you get flagged a, a real person takes a look at what's going on because none of these messages are private right eBay has access to them and once an individual looks at that if they see something funny going on you may get bounced off the platform you're on right so this is the message that I sent the person I just checked PayPal but there is no invoice there that said would you be okay if we went through eBay okay I've been burnt once 
doing direct invoices for eBay auctions before and I really don't want to put myself in that situation again I'd be cool with making the offer $48 uh, or so to cover eBay's cut would that be cool so I basically said I'm okay kicking up my offer to $48 instead of 45 and this is Canadian and you can see what they're what they are in US funds in the table right so basically he was selling it for $45 US and I made him offer for $36 US right to cover the eBay costs as well and he replied sure that's fine I'll adjust the offer thanks just quick message right now after we made the transaction I got the package two days ago yesterday I got the following email from eBay okay this is why I'm telling you this this is an email message from eBay we're writing to say thanks recent activity on your account indicated that a transaction between you and another member originally might not have been completed through eBay or that contact information was shared par prior to completing the transaction neither of these situations follows eBay's policy however the transaction was eventually completed through eBay ensuring the full range of services and protection that we provide to buyers and sellers thanks for that and they provided some additional information below that right I just wanted to let you know about that read you that uh, just in case you're doing you know you're using not necessarily just eBay but other platforms because as we've talked about in economics personal finance there's a lot of automation kicking in right a lot of data is being filtered stored right stored specifically and then they're being you know monitored for keywords and sequences of events and if certain things happen in a certain order then they get red flag and real human eyes take a look at that stuff and they make a judgment call based on what's going on right so keep that in mind this sort of links up with personal finance automation and what we've talked about previously okay now let's get to the comic book call so the exo man of war cost me 130 dollars canadian okay which comes out to 97.50 us the dmz lot cost me 48 dollars canadian which is 36 dollars us okay so the dmz lot cost a dollar 24 per issue and the exo lot cost a dollar 37 per issue and the shipping for this was uh, 25 dollars canadian which came out to 1875 us so this total haul 100 comic books from two different runs cost 152 dollars us bag boarded delivered okay which came out to dollar uh, 52 us okay now let me crack this open let me take this down i'm going to take the table down for those watching live stream the comic book haul let me show you this is this is the box we got okay now i opened it up a couple days ago just to make sure the stuff was sitting straight because i was going to let it sit there so i wanted them to be sitting straight right uh, upright okay and the person has packaged it really nicely let me show you this nicely bubble wrapped okay and we're just gonna grab it should we take a look at dmz first or dmz oh nice yeah let's take a look at dmz first hold on let me put this make a little space let me put this down pick up the dmz okay and dmz stands for demilitarized demilitarized zone and i've got some data to show you guys for this as well okay let's crack this okay i borrowed a sharp exacto knife for this because serious bubble wrap take a look at this right 
nicely packaged. This is exactly the way you want to receive books. Preferably when they're, someone's packaging up the books, ideally you don't want the outside. This comic should be flipped so it's backing board to backing board. That way nothing, you know, if there's any punctures during the shipping, they won't get punctured, okay? Just a heads up. Uh, because I know the person for the last comic book haul, he actually ended up watching the stream we did. So he saw uh, he saw all the data we shared for the last comic book haul. Uh, he was a Valiant collector and I came across him on a forum after doing the buys just by luck, right? So let me put this here. I'm just reading comments. Thomas saying, Hey Chicho, how you doing? I'm doing well, brother. Thank you very much. Let's do this. Oh, he's got tape on this. Oh, look at this. So he's bubble wrapped, taped the bubble wrap to the top of the comic as well. So I gotta be careful with this guy. Oh, he's got packing tape on here. Okay, cool. Let's take a look at this. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> nice stuff. Okay. Now, before I show you this, these guys, let me show, let me tell you who this is. Okay. Now, DMZ. Okay. Let me bring up some data we got from DMZ. And let me I'll tell you who this is. DMZ is by Vertigo. Is DC Comics, it's the Vertigo imprint, and it's more mature readers basically. Okay, and this is by it's written by Brian Wood. Some of the artwork is done by Brian Wood. I believe a lot of the covers are done by Brian Wood as well. And we've we've I love Brian Wood's writing. Uh, I've read I haven't read everything Brian Wood has done, I've read a, a fair bit Brian Wood's done, and I've been collecting Brian Wood's. Um, runs uh, some of the comics if you watch some of the other comic book calls we picked up Northlanders and he's done um, you know I, I read up his bio for this thing but basically Brian Wood the guys um, here this is the intro to it right uh, on Wikipedia Brian Wood born 1972 is an American writer illustrator and graphic designer he's known primarily as a comic book creator and has also written for television and video games right and video games is what really intrigued me and I I'm pretty sure I knew this before, but he was a staff designer for Rockstar, right? He worked on Grand Theft Auto, okay, Nightclub, Max Payne. So he's, he's, he's got uh, a lot of gaming experience coming into this, which is why I believe the stories that he tells are absolutely phenomenal. He's one of the best storytellers in in comic books working right now contemporary comic book storytellers that we have I and mean, I'm pretty sure he future down the road people are gonna look very very highly on Brian Wood and whatever everything that I've read from Brian Wood I love DMZ the most and DMZ I came across at a time where I wasn't buying any comic books right there's been periods where I do moves and stuff like this I need to downsize or whatever it is there's periods I haven't done any comic book buys and when i don't do comic book buys for this period anyway what i ended up doing for like three or four years i would go to the comic um i would go to the library and read trey paperback so i read a lot of comic books through the library my local library and dmz was one of them that's how i got introduced to it and i read dmz way past halfway there were 72 issues of DNZ it was it ran from November 2005 until February 2015 okay so there were 72 issues total okay and I've read at least 36 of them and it's a fantastic series and at some point I'm gonna continue on from where I left off because the the story is really etched in my mind I really loved it and the artwork for it absolutely phenomenal the artwork I didn't know this but He's an Italian artist. His name is Riccardo uh, Borsellini, Borsellini, okay? And DMZ is his first 
uh, comic book writing, uh, comic book art for American comics, as far as I know and as far as what I could find on Wiki on him, right? So this is his first art in comic book format, in this format from American Comic Book Publishing Company, which is fantastic, and the artwork is amazing, right? As far as what DMZ is, the story for it is, let me just read you um, the wiki, the wiki write-up for it, okay? The wiki write-up says this, and it's because we're following this up with a little politics live stream we've been doing, as far as political comic book comic books go um trans metropolitan is fantastic is cyberpunk futuristic this is also in the near distant future okay and it's one of the best politically charged comic books stories i've ever read it is absolutely fantastic specifically related to the united states and very much related to the political uh, landscape right now what's going on in the United States to a certain degree it's a fantastic series if you like politics really and great storytelling and character development and it goes into it challenges a lot of the things that we should be thinking about which you know the concept of what is a journalist and what should a journalist do and what does it mean when there's a civil war when there's um, when there's all this stuff happening right really focused on the united states which is wow the timing on it is insane right but here's a little write-up on dmz dmz is a comic book series written by brian, brian wood with artwork by wood and ricardo borshilili <laughs> sorry about the pronunciation the series set is set in the new future where second american civil war has turned the island of Manhattan into a demilitarized zone, DMZ, okay? Caught between forces of the United States of America and secessionist free states of America. Fantastic, fantastic, really, okay? And one other thing before we get into the comic books and the data, DMZ has been optioned to become a TV series. And they sent, you know, they let the news out in 2014, and I think they're trying to get it going now. Okay. Now, let me show you. Uh, now, this thing, uh, you know, let me read the description for it. He basically wrote it up as DMZ Comics, Vertigo, nice run, 29 comics, right? So 29 out of 72 comics. And we have the tail both ends, right? Number one and number 72 right and uh, basically he said these comics are very fine to near mint on average okay now let me bring up some tables for you guys ba, 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 ba. here is because we're doing print runs okay let me show you the print runs for dmz comics right because we did uh, one of the things we're doing with asmr math uh, I mentioned in a previous haul that we did, we built up a table, you know, that you can access as well online, uh, where we started talking about, you know, print runs are pretty important in comic books. So is, you know, how important the comic is, if it's first appearances, deaths, who the artists are, the writers, if they're uh, first issues of a comic book publishing company and whatnot, right? Or the last issues being rare or whatnot, right? So I brought up, because we've been looking at print runs, in a lot of the comic book halls since that comic book run that we did and especially in the previous one that we did right with the valiant comics we really emphasized the print runs and we took a look at prices here is the print runs for dmz comics and this is a handful of them right that you see that i've got in the table we've got the print run for number one and we have the print run for number 72 and we have a whole bunch of print runs between there right and we have the print runs for the first five of these things right and here's a chart that i put together for the print run right and as you can see you know the first issue has the highest print run which you know it's going for the highest price right now resale price right now as it should because it's the first appearance of dmz right so it's got the highest print run 
And the highest print run, number one, from the data I could find, is 19,000 comics. And slowly it comes down from there. So, it, you know, number one issues usually have the highest print run. So it has, you know, 19,000 and then does a little slump down. And then there's, you know, a plateau and they're around 14,000 or so. And then around issue number 18, it starts coming down. And then the last issue, you know, we're going down to 10,000, 9,000, 8,000. And the last issue is 6,000 issues printed, right? Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Now, if you, you know, I'll show you the print run for the other comic book as well, uh, Exo Man of War. So let me show you the chart for Exo Man of War. Doop. Let me take this off. Here is the print run. Here, let me leave this chart on. So here's a table that shows the same issues, the print runs for the same issues as DMZ as for Exo Man of War, the other lot that we have. Okay. So the print run for DMZ number one was 19,000. The print run for Exo Man of War in the 1990s was 80,000. And DMZ is in the mid 2000s. And Exo Man of War is in the early 90s, right? So huge difference. Now, let me change up the chart here. Oops, no, we want that one. Let me show you the table. I'm doing this live for the, for the people watching live stream. I'm bringing up the table and the chart so they see it as well. Here is DMZ print run, graft versus the Exo Man of War print run, okay? And Exo Man of War, if you recall, uh, we'll bring up the table. Actually, let me bring it up for, um, for the people watching live as well. But the peak right there that you see for Exo Man of War, that one is, let me make sure we got the right one. That one is initially the Exo Man of War stuff was, you know, the Valiant stuff that was being printed. It wasn't getting relative to the 1990s. It didn't have a huge number of orders and then it decreased, right, into the 35 to 40,000 um, issues printed. And then during the early 1990s to mid 1990s, Valiant Comics really took up. So the peak you see there with the with the thing skyrocketing that's issue number 18 of exo man of war and that had 350,000 issues printed right now because that's such an extreme putting two scales two runs print runs on the same graph we're going to take out the 350,000 and i want to show you another graph here's the other graph with the 350,000 gone right that way you can do a comparison of how many issues were printed for Exo Man of War and how many issues were printed for DMZ. And that sort of should give you a feel of how many comics were being printed in the 1990s relative to how many comics were being printed in the 2000s, right? And Exo Man of War uh, for the 1990s, it wasn't, you know, it didn't have that big of a print run. If you take out the middle section, the chart we've talked about before, which I will show you, right? So this is sort of a comparison of what the print runs for the same issue for each of the comics is, you know, as compared to DMZ, comparing it to Exo Man of War. And Exo Man of War went up to uh, 68 issues and DMZ went up to 72 issues. So they're very much compatible. And Exo Man of War number 68, uh, the last issue had 15,000 print run, right? So compare 350,000 dropping down to 15,000, right? Only 5%, less than 5% what its maximum print run was relative to DMZ, which is about a third of what the maximum print run, run was, right? I thought that was pretty cool, uh, pretty cool info, sort of nice charts. Uh, to take a look at right and let me take these down okay that way now we can take a look at the comic books right and let me bring up the comic book haul again Doop. and this thing costs basically uh, 48 dollars canadian or 36 dollars us and with shipping in us dollars 
it cost um, da, 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 da. for these comics it cost uh, $1.24 and uh, da, 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 da. Oh, sorry with shipping if you average it between the two halls it cost uh, $1.52 US or two oh three Canadian okay that's one of the longest intros we've done for a comic book haul right because we've got all the data going on now these don't seem to be in order 63 okay you know what let me see if i can oh there it is that's the final issue oh nice okay let me start here this is number one and check this out he said these are very fine to near mint and here's issue number one okay Oop, let me take down the table for those watching live okay here's issue number one and it's the convention special take a look at this awesome and this is actually fetching a higher price than um, the regular version right and I'm pretty sure the print run for this is going to be less than what the regular was the regular one is 19,000 I don't know what this one is okay and this alone is basically going for in very fine condition is going for the same price that I paid for the whole lot okay I checked two places I checked um, what I like to do I like to crack this open because uh, this one is uh, the key issue and the later issues I can't believe what the print run how low the print run is for these things 6,000 right um, I might try to find uh, another lot that contains everything uh, I'm gonna go through these I'm gonna see what kind of condition there are but let's do the first check on this and again I put the tape on the side let's take a look at this take a look nice and flat sharp corners nice comic let's see it's got a little bit of and vertical comics have these it's got a little bit of things you going on there okay and when you, one thing you can do if you want to feel if there's any nicks dents in the spine you can just run your finger over it right not bad pretty good take a look beautiful <laughs> nice copy nice copy I would give this a 9 9.2 easy peasy ah uh, yeah this is a great series let me show you this I don't want to do any damage to it and the back cover yeah I would give this a little bit of I don't know if I wouldn't call this a scuff mark but there's a little bit of things you get so I would give this a 9 8.59 okay let me show you okay I won't show you the inside pages of Mark and not let me show you the inside pages of this one you need to see the inside pages of this one especially the person that helped acquire this right so that's DMZ number one the cover should be Brian what I believe take a look at the artwork the artwork brilliant love the artwork take a look at that right fantastic I cannot high recommend this highly enough if you like politically charged comic books okay beautiful and I gotta add for why the last man another amazing series right this artwork is beautiful look at that okay so the guy's 100 percent legit he said very fine to near mint these are very fine to near mint if the convention issue one is in this shape the rest of them should be if they're in this shape the rest of them are very happy but they should be in better shape considering this is just a convention one okay and they gave this one away for free check this out right so if you went I'm not sure which convention this was but they gave this one away for free right so let's put this guy here oh yeah here we go let's take a look at these covers 
beautiful copies nice here's number two so this is 29 issues of DMZ we got right this is number should be number three number three and this story tackled a lot of important issues okay a lot of important issues regarding politics here's number five so we don't have number four okay take my finger off his face right this is number seven there's so much going on in this series number eight and this main guy this is the main character and he's a journalist right or well I won't give any spoilers right. here's number 12 beautiful covers very unique very unique okay. <laughs> look at this cover absolutely brilliant right number 14 right look at the riot police trust look at the panel the girl or I we don't know if it's a girl uh, someone with a, a full face mask on their face right? take a look at that trust public works right number 17 and there are different stories being told if you see up there's five of five right story arcs beautiful 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 imbani number 24 so that was number uh sorry this was number 17. this was number 17. okay here's number 24 and dmz lots can be had on the cheap right now okay really i'm amazed uh, how low they're going for right now beautiful cover number 25 get rid of the glare beautiful copies very nice copies this is number 28 Nice. Love the handle where the goatee style going. Number 33. Beautiful. Blood in the game, part five of six. Number 36. The island. in minds <laughs> nice this is number what number is this where's the number on it number 47 take a look at this what a cover hearts and minds this is in large part the struggle between decentralization and central powers and people wanting to control and so much so much this is number 48 the story arc is called hearts and minds okay nice mia part one missing in action this is number 51 This is number 53. Beautiful. Take a look at this. Let me put these in order so we go 53. Yeah, so this is in order. This is number 57. I'm not sure if you can see that. 
it's a woman holding a baby crying Number 58. Number 59. states rising number 61 number 63 and this came out in 2011 Oh, we got two copies of number 63. Wow, wow, wow. That's cool. Beautiful shape. Very nice shape. 68. I shouldn't even be looking at these covers too intensely because I don't want any spoilers for myself. Right, sixty nine, seventy, We don't have 71, but here's 72. We won't crack it open. I'll crack this open later. Nice. Very happy to have these. Very happy to have these. Definitely the person's going to get a very nice, nice feedback on this one. That's for sure. All right. Let me put these guys away. all the DMs that we have. Let's see what we got. Exo Man of War. Let's start off with uh, the earlier issues, right? Let's do Exo Man of War. Let me put this guy here. Put this guy here. Can't forget about this guy. Okay, let's put it here. Okay, now before we get into the EXO, let me give you the data for EXO. Okay, now if you take a look at this, for those watching live, right, and you can see it right now, I'm just popping up the chart, the table, and a graph that we saw in the previous comic book haul, right, where we looked at um, the number of comic books that Valiant Comics in the first time they came onto the scene, how many comics they published from 1990 all the way to 1996, right? And we see the chart, you know, start off, you know, less than what all the other, the big two were publishing, but, you know, nice, nice chunk, you know, they're printing 60, uh 70 80 50 000, right and then in the 
early 1990s, mid 1990s, it just went skyrocketed. And the table that you see here with two rock number one being in uh, mid 1993, that's 1.7 million. The graph, the bar graph should actually be a lot higher, right? Be a lot exaggerated. But if we did that, we wouldn't be able to see the trend going, right? So it's been truncated. And you can see that initially in Unity and pre-Unity only had about you know, 3%, pre-Unity was around 3% of the comic books that Valiant published. Unity was around 3%. Just post-Unity was, uh, um, what do you call it, around 4%. And then 50% of the comics, Valiant comics published in the 1990s were published in 1993. That's crazy. That's huge, right? And then after the bubble burst in the comic book industry, the print runs really came down where in the last year, only 1% of the comic books they published were published in the last year right as as a total of 81 million right so this is something we talked a fair bit about in the last comic book haul video i just wanted you guys to see this again right and if you take a look at this let me take these charts down okay compare that to the chart oops let me bring up this one for those watching live that's basically the same trend that we saw for the valiant comics right exo sort of follows the same pattern right so the print runs for exo man of war which was one of their flagship comic books sort of has that starting off and then coming down and whoop, and then coming back down again right as you if you compare that to dmz dmz goes like this does a plateau comes down right it never had a huge boost up and then coming down right it never got hyped up to that level okay so that's the valiant in general and let me show you the print runs because we've talked about valiant comics let me show you uh ba -ba -ba, the for those watching right live the valiant chart rare print runs here is a list the table of the rarest 17 pre-unity valiants right and in the previous haul we ended up getting eight of those comics pre-unity the rarest 17 Valiant comics. We ended up grabbing eight of those in the last comic book haul we did, right? In this comic book haul, we grabbed two more, okay, from the rarest pre-Unity Valiants from the 1990s. We grabbed Exo Man of War number four, and we got Exo Man of War number three, right? And Exo Man of War number four is the first appearance of Jack Boniface, which turns up to be Shadow Man, right? So. It is valued higher a little bit relative to the rest okay um, other than exo man of war number one of course okay the first appearance of exo man of war so we ended up grabbing two more from this top 17 so in these two comic book halls we ended up grabbing 10 of the rarest pre-unity uh, valiants from the 1990s okay and here is just to give you a feel for it here's the print runs for the exo do we have that exo sales table oh no we have, we're gonna do that one later so here's the print runs for uh while i crack this open just to give you a feel for what we ended up getting in the slot and what we ended up getting in the slot let me read it to you let me read you what he had written where did i put that sheet boop, 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 boop. there we go Uh, oh, not that one. Oh, oh. Is it that one? Nope. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, we put it in the back here. That's right. It's trying to be organized. Trying to be organized. So, this is uh, this is what he had written in the description of the haul, right? And let me bring up the haul so you see the prices on this. Uh, doop. So we ended up paying uh, $130 Canadian and uh, basically $25 shipping as well, right? So it ended up being $97, $97.50 US and another $19 uh, shipping for this, right? So they ended up costing about uh, da -da -da, 
$1.60 per unit, right? And this is what he had written. Hi, here's your chance to acquire near complete run of Exo Man of War, which includes many key issues, as well as VHTF last issue. The VHTF, I don't know what VHTF means. <laughs> but I have also included a nice run of the second series, Volume 2 from Acclaim, right? So we got Exo Man of War Volume 1 from this. Not all of them, uh, but... A lot of them there's 10 missing and we got about 10 issues of the second exo man of war series from acclaimed comics which is the print runs for are a lot less right so let me bring up the print runs for these guys the, the, the exo print runs for those watching live that way they see it here's he did this again right he should have definitely flipped this so it was backing board backing board we don't want Exo Man of War being number one being possibly damaged, right? And as far as I'm concerned, Exo Man of War right now is going is reasonably priced. You can get it pretty much on the cheap on eBay and other places as well, I believe. open this way okay let me crack this open there we go hopefully he didn't tape Here's Exo Man of War number one, and this looks like to be a fantastic shape. And he mentioned that these were, you know, very fine to near mint again. Look at that, Exo Man of War. Oop, let me bring out for those watching live. Let me take down the print runs for these. And the print run for number one was eighty thousand. And we'll look at the chart for this again. So Exo Man of War print run number one was eighty thousand. The first five issues, six issues, are low. Number seven, number eight were Unity crossovers, so they topped that they went above a hundred thousand, and then it came down just a little bit for number ten, and then from number eleven, number twelve, you start hitting a hundred thousand print run for Exo Man of War. It peaks, and then by around thirty-four, it starts coming down to eighty-five thousand. Thirty-seven is sixty-five thousand, forty-two thousand, and then uh, starts going into the thirty thousands. By number 50 and then by number um, towards the end of 19 uh, the 50s you're down into the 20 thousands and towards the last issues you're into the teens right the last issue of exo man of war is 15,000 print run okay now that we got the print runs done let's start looking at the covers and this is again this is the first appearance of exo man of war now, this looks like to be a fantastic shape really beautiful beautiful should we crack it open take a look should we do a quick peek let's do a quick peek let's do a quick peek take a look nice and flat very nice copy very nice copy I'm just doing a little no nothing nice let's check out the back oh this is like 9.4 9.6 look at that beautiful beautiful
Yeah, let's throw this back in the bag. Okay. Happy with this buy. The seller is a good seller. One thing that's happened is uh, because so many American sellers are now using eBay's global shipping program, because it's costing so much to ship from Can to Canada from the US, I've basically almost stopped buying. Well, last few hauls we've gotten, we've just gone from Canadian sellers. So this must be really good for the Canadian sellers, right? Uh, because there's been some stuff that I wanted to buy uh, from American seller sellers, but they're going eBay's global shipping program. I'm not, if I can't help it, I'm not gonna touch that stuff, right? Beautiful, beautiful. So let's put that guy there. Let's start looking at the covers here. <laughs> nice. Here's XO number two. Take a look at this. Beautiful. Orb Industries. Okay. XO number three. So number four, this is the first appearance of Jack Boniface Shadow Man. And this one is on the rarest valiance. I think it's number um, seven or eight, is it? We'll pop up the chart. Let me put this down. Let's take a look at the rarest valiance again. Right. Let's pick up the rare print runs. So Exo Man of Four is forty thousand. It's the ninth rarest, and Exo Man of uh, Exo Number Three was anywhere between forty to 40, 45,000. and that was the Exo Number Three is the thirteenth one down the list, thirteenth rarest Valiant pre Unity comic in the nineteen nineties, and this one is ninth one, and this is the first appearance of Jack Boniface. Beautiful cover. And that's Harbinger in the background, right? So early Harbinger appearance. Oh, sorry, the Renegades. This is like uh, Torque and Chris and Flamingo and Faith and nice Peter. Should we check this one out too? Let's check this one out too. These two are the, well, number two and number three, they should be key issues. They're, they're going on the cheap. Like for me, as far as I'm concerned, they're, they're very cheap right now but number one and number four go for a premium price right let's take a look at this oh i gotta take the table down for those watching live let's take a look at this nice comic look at that flat Let's do the run test. Yeah, doesn't even have spine things on it. That's crazy. This is a fantastic grade. Oh, it's got a little bit of thing here. That's just from printing. Let's take a look at this. Little bit of a stretch mark around the staple on the back. So this would easily be a nine. 9.2 9.4 right i would have to look at this under uh, natural light as well just to make sure right but a beautiful comic copy right beautiful copy let's throw this back in the bag very happy about this haul I still haven't completed this run but this brings it very very close and the rest will be um, the rest of the issues I need to get are, are gonna be easy to get except for number uh, do we have number 71 uh, 
the only one we're missing from the end end of this from the last issues is number 66 it went up to number 68 here's number five i love this cover there's a few covers here that i really really like okay i love xo number 10 if, if we have it here yeah we do here's xo number six glare for you guys here's XO number 10 I love this cover I think it's beautiful here's XO number 12 number 13 number 14 and number 15 let me show you these guys together this is um, Bart Sears and Bart Sears at the time uh, was very popular and I love Bart Sears' art style okay and this is Turok here I believe this was the first crossover with Turok I'm going to bring it a little closer so you see it okay so that's number 14 and then here's number 15 and this was a great great two issue story basically Turok is a dinosaur hunter and um, after unity uh, from the lost land I think it's called the lost land anyway um, the place was destroyed solar reset everything but a lot of these dinosaurs that are actually intelligent escaped uh, to different parts of the earth so Turok's hunting them down right so this is number 14 and 15 okay perfect Here's number 16. Let's put it here. Number 17. Number 18. Number 18. Right? So this is the one that had the highest print run of XO right I believe so anyway was it that one number 19 there's XO on the bottom there right no oh, this is number 50 so they're not going there's number 20 number 50 zero here we'll look at this one later here's number 20. nice <laughs> this one i didn't know existed take a look at this number 21 right i didn't know about this one i stopped uh, i stopped reading uh pretty much after in the late teens right take a look here's number five and here's number 21 right these would be great framed look at this fantastic also <laughs> right they look great nice <laughs> i'm gonna put these ones on the side maybe i'll end up framing those guys i love that one yeah, Exo Man of War, Barbarian, awesome. So he must have lost his suit, right? Nice. Number twenty-three. Number twenty-four. He's back. Exo's back. Face on him. Number 25, featuring Armory's number zero. Oh, there's DMZ here. Nice. Cool. 
So I wonder if there's more DMZ we haven't seen. So that was number, which one was that? 25. Here's DMZ. Number 54. Cool. Let's do a little DMZ break. Here's DMZ, number 54. He put it between the XOs. That's a beautiful cover. Really. American coffins. Right? Yeah. This is something that mainstream media was banned from showing in the United States after the Iraq War, shortly after the Iraq War, right? So it's cool to see it in comics. All right. Let me put this here. Here's number 55. Five hours under fire. This one. This one is where's the number? <laughs> That's fifty-six. <laughs> awesome. DLZ. Let me put these guys here. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Just because it's sitting out before we crack open. We've got two more stacks of exos to take a look at. This is uh number fifty. Okay. XO number 50. Let me put these upright and we crack open another one. Let's crack open. Which one is this one? Oh, I think it's this one. What? I think the last one has uh, the later issues. So again, Nice packaging. It's just too bad he's got them facing out. I don't know why he would do that. So number 32, let me put these guys here, free valiant sneak peek card inside, vengeance trial, part 3 of 3, number 36. Number 33, Chaos Effect. Trying to get rid of the glare. Dinosaurs still around there. Eh? Number 34. Seven. Most of these covers I haven't seen. The top of some of these has been scuffed. The plastic bags. I'll have to change a few plastic bags. The Wolf Brigade of Baird. Part two of four. Number thirty-eight. Number thirty-nine. Number 40.
number 41. Cool color. Number 42, this is Shadow Man. Should be anywhere. I'll put these guys over here. Here is 43. Forty-four. This one's a little bit more scuffed up. I'm glad issue number one is not like this. <laughs> I don't know if you can see a little bit of spine dings there, right? Forty-four. This is Bart Sears again. I swear this looks like Bart Sears. Who's the artist for this? Oh, it is Bart Sears. Look at this. Ron Mars and Bart Sears up top. This is XO45. Bart Sears comes back to XO. Awesome. I might have to give this one a read. At some point, I'll be reading all of these. My retirement plan is to read all these. <laughs> right? That's beautiful. Rabbit forty seven. I don't know who that lady is there. Forty six. Forty-eight. This one's got some dings on it too on the spine. So forty-eight. Busy. XO and fire. Is it? Yeah. That actually looks pretty cool. He's sitting on a throne with a lot of skulls behind him burning up. Not bad. Oh, somebody's pissed. Who's this guy? Bart Sears again. 49. Someone's got the XO armor. So this is 52. So I don't know what the other one was. That was 50 zero? Where was that one? Number 50, oh, so, oh yeah, there were two copies, two versions, and this is 50X. So there's two different, we saw this one. This is 50 cover O, and this is number 50 cover X. It says it up here. There is, I don't know if you can see it, there's the X there, and then there's the O there, okay. And here's the X one by itself. Busy. Do they connect? Oh, they do connect. Take a look. I think they connect. Yeah, they connect. Take a look at this. Hopefully I can make them connect. <laughs> something like this <gasps> see the guy's face that's cool I'll keep these guys together here, let's put him here here's 52 looks like Bart Sears came back for a lot of these 50 issues 40 issues Here's 53. And 
Exo Man of War was created by Jim Shooter, Leighton, uh, Ingle Hart, I believe, and uh, Barry Windsor Smith. 54. that's crazy oh that's the other series that's right so that is a trippy cover bravo lips again what here i'll show you these ones so this is 55 56 57 58 and these look like they're in nice condition Fifty-nine. Oh, Keith Giffen is back. This one's Bailey still, but so that was fifty-nine. Here's sixty-two, and this is Giffen. Nice. I like Giffen's work. Here's 63. <laughs> I wonder if he paid three dollars. He's got price tags on him. I wonder if he paid three dollars for these. Also, this is a 63. So this is a later issue. Their print runs are pretty low for these, right? Here's 64. Before. and this is still Giffen this is Keith Giffen again nice look at this cover we've seen some comics that have the same pose right so this is 65 this is towards the later uh, runs right so this is like 16 17,000 print run for this beautiful cover he's mourning the exo armor he's holding up we've seen some comics we've had uh, Superman doing this and Flash doing this and and whatnot other comic book halls right fantastic fantastic one day i'll grab all the covers i have of someone holding like this crying and someone put them all together in a row right i wonder who was the first person to ever do it here's 67 second to last issue right nice what kind of condition you can run your finger over the plastic as well the, and this is good condition nice condition comic beautiful and here's the last issue 68 oh he's got a hokey pokey bag <laughs> look at this guy he's got a backing board sitting up like that with the white in the back oof I gotta change this guy 
Here's number 68, the final issue. Print run of 15,000 or something, right? The end. Cool. So this is the first Exo Man of War series, right? And we have the second Exo Man of War series here too. So let me put these guys away. We'll take a look at the second one. And the second one is... Uh, they changed the name from Valiant to Acclaim. I mean, look at this. The top of the plastic bag has got to change all those, right? It's been scuffed up. It's probably during shipment. Has to be. So this is uh, Exo Man of War, the second series. Let me bring up the print runs for these. Exo Man of War print run, right? So this is... Uh, volume two number one had four different covers and it's got 44,000 print and I think this is the main one that we have here and then you know it went down number two was 27,000 number three was 26,000 and the last issue that we have here it went up to 21 issues the last issue only has 8,500 print run right so the print runs for volume two were lower than print runs for volume one right so let's take the graph down and here is number one okay that's the main cover here's number two this is wade this is mark wade writing it no really here's number two nice covers I haven't heard too many great things about these the acclaim runs I've actually heard people didn't like them very much I haven't read any of the acclaim stuff uh, but I want to be a completionist with Valiant I like to have everything at some point you know I'll go through and put it all together and fill holes but right now if I can grab the lots on the cheap we do it number four Number five. Here's number 10. This is the cover I was laughing at. This is, uh, <laughs> check this out. Exo Man of War, number 10. <laughs> this is like a spoof of uh, uh, Captain America and stuff, right? number 100 i believe or avenger is number four i believe i forget what number which issue but basically we have uh, uh an avengers marvel comic that does has covers like this right nice cover here's number 11. Number 13. Number 15. Number 17. Exo's armor looks like Iron Man's here or something. Number 19. And that was the third last issue. Here is number 21. The last issue, the final days of EXO. And this is, we've seen covers like this before from other publishers. If a hero or someone dies, they do this superman funeral for a friend or whatever not funeral for a friend um death of superman had it a few other ones have had it too right so that's the last issue of the acclaim and we got four more comics to look at from the first series here's turok and exo again in exo man of war 27 
Okay. Here is XO number 26 from this first series. Here's XO number 28. And here's XO number 31. Now, there's one other thing I wanted to share with you guys. Now, that was, seriously, I'm very happy with this, with this buy. Uh, the DMZ, I mean, just a convention issue, fantastic shape. Like, phew, that alone is worth the whole lot. And the XOs, number one, four, the early issues are amazing shape. Same with the last issue, right? But what I want to show you as well, since we're, we've, in the last comic book haul, we took a look at the, uh, how much Harbinger number one and Eternal Warrior number four were selling in the last 15 years or so, right? We saw the charts come up where, you know, they were fairly stable from the mid 2000s, early 2000s, all the way to late 2000s. And then in 2012, 2014, 15, it started kicking up. And both EXO, uh, both Harbinger number one and uh, Eternal Warrior number four are selling. For premium price right now relative to what they were selling like they're selling for you know anywhere between five to ten fold increase of what they're selling for right I also put together a chart uh, for EXO okay let me show you this this is the sales for EXO Man of War number one and EXO Man of War number 68 the last issue okay now we didn't have uh, there wasn't let me bring these guys up so you see them okay so this is exo man of war number one right oops let me take these charts down for a second so we're gonna look at the sale prices for exo man of war number one okay whatever I could find right we could throw in a chart and take a look at a trend and exo man of war number 68 right and the chart we're going to look at is the graded versions of them being graded at uh, 9.8 right and if you take a look at this chart exo man of war was selling at fairly stable price okay from 2002 all the way to 2000 and you know 13 and 14 changing in price basically you know from 75 to 50 and stuff like this and recently it started moving up right the last few sales have been above 150 around 150 dollar uh, range graded at 9.8 right now you can take a look at this and the trend you could see it's starting to peak up right so that's one thing you want to take a look at if you're buying comics if something has stabilized in price or buying anything anyway if the trend is picking up and i thought this was a pretty good comparison to what we put together for eternal in the last haul eternal warrior number four and a harbinger number one because those two have kicked up in price a lot more so if you're following a trend basis to a certain degree i would be expecting exo number one to follow the same trend as harbinger number one and eternal warrior number one right and if you look at exo man of war number 68 this thing because when it comes to investing when it comes to buying anything put your money uh you know parking your money somewhere sometimes the price doesn't necessarily go up it comes down and that's what's been the case for exo man of war number 68 now it only has 15,000 print run while exo man of war number one has 80,000 print run right but exo man of war number one is the first appearance of exo man of war 68 is the last issue so if you want to be a completionist you need this number 68 right but 68 in the mid 2000s was you know graded 9.8 there aren't the frequency for this data is not very much especially for number 68 there's only you know a handful of issues sold you know one two three maybe five six issues sold per year 
that we're graphing, right? So we need the frequency to be higher to have a better, uh, uh, a better possibility of doing some analysis and doing some predictions, right? But we go with what we have. So Exo Madam War number 68 in the mid 2000s was selling for $200 plus graded at 9.8. Right now, the price of that thing is selling stabilizing around the hundred dollar range right so the price has decreased 50 percent since the midnight mid 2000s now so anybody's guess if the price is going to kick up again or going to take another tumble but it is stabilizing right so that's one thing you should you know take a look at if you're thinking about investing stuff like this in association with the print runs and key issues what the important issues are and whatnot okay I just wanted to share that information and sort of uh, tag team this with the with the previous comic book haul that we did where we took a look at a fair bit of data right where we're sort of introducing the mathematics into this buying comic books and investing in comic books and you know once we build up a fair bit of data we'll start taking a look at some other um, some variables and try to do some predictions and come up with our own you know sort of indicators ratios to see maybe if something is a good buy maybe something is overvalued maybe something is going for a cheap 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 something's going for a premium price right uh so it's a lot you know it's fun to play with the stuff fun to play with the data and it's definitely fun to collect uh to build a collection and sort of try to be putting series together right and i'm definitely going to look for more dmz uh comics and at some point you know put the whole dmz series together i'm trying to do that with a few other uh, titles as well not just the valiance but there are some vertical titles that i want to get the complete runs for and some image titles i want to get complete runs for and some dc and marvel as well and other series other from other publishers as well okay i hope you enjoy it uh, a fun haul to do fun haul to do um and uh just to let you know i'm uh, slowly contacted another seller where we, we've done a fair bit of buys for where the guy allows me to you know buy single issues and stuff like this and have some comics stored up with them and uh, once we fill up a full uh, short box or maybe before short box i'm going to get that stuff sent to us as well so we might be doing another comic book haul within a month or so and that comic book haul is going to go back to the trend that we were doing before with comic book hauls we we're buying sort of from all uh ages of comic books from golden age silver age bronze age modern age right and uh, i've already tagged a few of them and there's some nice golden age comics uh, that will be coming uh to us in the next month or so okay and there's uh, one of the reasons i went back to this guy he put up some comics that i was really uh, wanting to get and uh, there's two comic books in this next haul coming in a month or so maybe uh, that we're gonna do a read for okay and uh, just to give you a teaser they're romance comics and they're from the same series one of them is pre-code and the other one is when the comic code code took effect they're basically a comic book series then they're sequential and uh you know i don't know what the number is one of them may be 11 where the comic code didn't take into effect the other one's number 12 where the comic book did take into effect it's got the comic code authority stamp on it so i think we'll do a read for those just to see if there's anything dramatic that changed between those things right and they're from the golden age of comics uh very much looking forward to that as well very much looking forward to that as well uh, i hope you enjoyed uh thank you for sticking around and uh, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.